Day 1, Isaiah 55, 9. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain comes down, and the snow from the sky, and doesn't return there, but waters the earth, and makes it bring forth and bud, and gives seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing I sent it to do. The Proverbs of Solomon Proverbs 1 The Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel. To know wisdom and instruction, to discern the words of understanding, to receive instruction in wise dealing, in righteousness, justice, and equity, to give prudence to the simple, knowledge and discretion to the young man, that the wise man may hear and increase in learning, that the man of understanding may attain to sound counsel, to understand a proverb and parables, the words and riddles of the wise. The fear of Yahweh is the beginning of knowledge, but the foolish despise wisdom and instruction. My son, listen to your father's instruction, and don't forsake your mother's teaching, for they will be a garland to grace your head and chains around your neck. My son, if sinners entice you, don't consent. If they say, come with us, let's lay in wait for blood. Let's lurk secretly for the innocent without cause. Let's swallow them up alive like Sheol and whole like those who go down into the pit. You'll find all valuable wealth. We'll fill our houses with spoil. You shall cast your lot among us. We shall have one purse. My son, don't walk in the path with them. Keep your foot from their path, for their feet run to evil. They hurry to shed blood, for in vain is the net spread in the sight of any bird. But these lay wait for their own blood. They lurk secretly for their own lives. So are the ways of everyone who is greedy for gain. It takes the life of its owners. Wisdom calls aloud in the street. She utters her voice in the public squares. She calls at the head of noisy places. At the entrance of the city gates, she utters her words. How long, you simple ones, will you love simplicity? How long will mockers delight themselves in mockery and fools hate knowledge? Turn at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit on you. I will make known my words to you. Because I have called and you have refused, I have stretched out my hand and no one has paid attention. But you've ignored all my counsel and wanted none of my reproof. I also will laugh at your disaster. I will mock when calamity overtakes you, when calamity overtakes you like a storm, when your disaster comes on like a whirlwind, when distress and anguish come on you. Then they will call on me, but I will not answer. They will seek me diligently, but they will not find me, because they hated knowledge and didn't choose the fear of Yahweh. They wanted none of my counsel. They despised all my reproof. Therefore, they will eat the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own schemes. For the backsliding of the simple will kill them. The careless ease of fools will destroy them. But whoever listens to me will dwell securely and will be at ease without fear of harm. Psalm 1. Blessed is the man who doesn't walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers, but his delight is in the law of Yahweh. On his law he meditates day and night. He will be like a tree planted by the streams of water that bring forth its fruit in season, whose leaf also does not wither. Whatever he does shall prosper. The wicked are not so, but are like chaff, which the wind drives away. 
Therefore the wicked shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For Yahweh knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked shall perish. Psalm 2. Why do the nations rage and the peoples plot a vain thing? The kings of the earth take a stand, and the rulers take counsel together against Yahweh and against his anointed, saying, Let's break their bonds apart and cast their cords from us. He who sits in the heavens will laugh. The Lord will have them in derision. Then he will speak to them in his anger and terrify them in his wrath. Yet I have set my king on my holy hill of Zion. I will tell of the decree. Yahweh said to me, you are my son. Today I have become your father. Ask of me and I will give the nations for your inheritance, the uttermost parts of the earth for your possession. You shall break them with a rod of iron. You shall dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Now therefore, be wise, you kings. Be instructed, you judges of the earth. Serve Yahweh with fear and rejoice with trembling. Give sincere homage to the sun, lest he be angry and be perish in the way. For his wrath will soon be kindled. Blessed are all those who take refuge in him. Psalm 3. Yahweh, how my adversaries have increased. Many are those who rise up against me. Many there are who say of my soul, there is no help for him in God. Selah. But you, Yahweh, are a shield around me, my glory and the one who lifts up my head. I cry to Yahweh with my voice, and he answers me out of his holy hill. Selah. I laid myself down and slept. I awakened, for Yahweh sustains me. I will not be afraid of tens of thousands of people who have set themselves against me on every side. Arise, Yahweh, save me, my God, for you have struck all my enemies on the cheekbone. You have broken the teeth of the wicked. Salvation belongs to Yahweh. Your blessing be on your people. Selah. Psalm 4. Answer me when I call, God of my righteousness. Give me relief from my distress. Have mercy upon me and hear my prayer. You sons of men, how long shall my glory be turned into dishonor? Will you love vanity and seek after falsehood? Selah. But know that Yahweh has set apart for himself who is godly. Yahweh will hear when I call to him. Stand in awe and don't sin. Search your own heart on your bed and be still. Selah. Offer the sacrifices of righteousness. Put your trust in Yahweh. Many who say, Who will show us any good? Yahweh, let the light of your face shine on us. You have put gladness in my heart more than when their grain and their new wine are increased. In peace, I will both lay myself down and sleep. For you, Yahweh, alone make me live in safety. Psalm 5. Give ear to my words, Yahweh. Consider my meditation. Listen to the voice of my cry, my King and my God. For to you do I pray. Yahweh, in the morning you shall hear my voice. In the morning I will lay my requests before you and will watch expectantly. For you are not a God who has pleasure in wickedness. Evil can't live with you. The arrogant shall not stand in your sight. You hate all workers of iniquity. You will destroy those who speak lies. Yahweh abhors the bloodthirsty and deceitful man. But as for me... In the abundance of your loving kindness, I will come into your house. I will bow toward your holy temple in reverence of you. Lead me, Yahweh, in your righteousness because of my enemies. Make your way straight before my face, for there is no faithfulness in their mouth. Their heart is destruction. Their throat is an open tomb. 
They flatter with their tongue. Hold them guilty, God. Let them fall by their own counsels. Thrust them out in the multitude of their transgressions, for they have rebelled against you. But let all those who take refuge in you rejoice. Let them always shout for joy because you defend them. Let them also who love your name be joyful in you. For you will bless the righteous. Yahweh, you will surround him with favor as with a shield. John 1. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him. Without him was not anything made that has been made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness hasn't overcome it. There came a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came as a witness that he might testify about the light, that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but was sent that he might testify about the light. The true light that enlightens everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, and the world didn't didn't recognize him. He came to his own, and those who were his own didn't receive him. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become God's children, to those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. The word became flesh and lived among us. We saw his glory, such glory as of the one and only Son of the Father, full of grace and truth. John testified about him. He cried out, saying, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me has surpassed me, for he was before me. From his fullness we all received grace upon grace, for the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth were realized through Jesus Christ. No one has seen God at any time. The one and only Son, who is in the bosom of the Father, he has declared him. This is John's testimony when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He declared, and didn't deny, but he declared, I am not the the Christ. They asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. They said therefore to him, Who are you? Give us an answer to take back to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord. As Isaiah the prophet said, The ones who had been sent were from the Pharisees. They asked him, Why then do you baptize if you were not the Christ, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptized in water, but among you stands one whom you didn't know. He is the one who comes after me, who is preferred before me, whose sandal strap I'm not worthy to loosen. These things were done in Bethany beyond the Jordan where John was baptizing. The next day, he saw Jesus coming to him, and he said, Behold the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who is preferred before me, for he was before me. I didn't know him, but for this reason I came baptizing in water, that he would be revealed to Israel. John testified, saying, I have seen the Spirit descending like a dove out of heaven, and it remained on him. I didn't recognize him, but he who sent me to baptize in water, he said to me, On whomever you will see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, the same as he who baptizes in the Holy Spirit. I have seen and have testified 
that this is the Son of God. Again, the next day, John was standing with two of his disciples, and he looked at Jesus as he walked and said, Behold, the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him speak, and they followed Jesus. Jesus turned and saw them following and said to them, What are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which is to say being interpreted teacher, Where are you staying? He said to them, Come and see. They came and saw where he was staying, and they stayed with him that day. It was about the tenth hour. One of the two who heard John and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his own brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which is being interpreted Christ. He brought him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, You are Simon, the son of Jonah. You shall be called Cephas, which is by interpretation Peter. On the next day, he was determined to go out into Galilee, and he found Philip. Jesus said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, of the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him of whom Moses and the law and the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nathanael said to him, Can any good thing come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him and said about him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom is no deceit. Nathanael said to him, How do you know me? Jesus answered him, Before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Nathanael answered him, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered him, Because I told you, I saw you underneath the fig tree, do you believe? You will see greater things than these. He said to him, Most certainly I tell you, hereafter you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. This ends the reading of the Word of God for day one. Praise, honor, and glory be to God. Amen.